Hello and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about keyframing. Understanding keyframing is fundamental in building your video editing skills. It's an important concept to learn because it unlocks more capabilities in effects that allow for keyframing. This in turn will allow you with greater flexibility and creativity in achieving a desired effect. And also note that the concept of keyframing not only applies to Caden Live, but also applies to other video editors in general. Okay, let's get started with this tutorial. So we've got Caden Live opened over here. And what I want you to do is click on the editing workspace so that we're all looking at the same user interface. Let's import in an image here. So this is just an image of a tractor with a blank background. It's going to ask me to change the project profile, which in this case is not super important for this demonstration. So I'll just click cancel. And as you can see here, we have this tractor image and a black background. And if I press play, nothing happens because it's just a static image. We're going to be using this image to demonstrate how we can pretty much animate this image by using keyframes. So let's pull this into our timeline. And as you can see, this is about four seconds long. I'm just going to click out of my project bin. I just want us to focus on our project monitor, which represents what is on our project timeline. Now let's add in an effect that we can apply a keyframe to. So let's go to effects and let's search for transform and let's drag this and apply it to our image here. Now, how do we know, first of all, that we can apply a keyframe to an effect? You'll notice that there is this timeline over here and there is this diamond. So this is a keyframable effect. This is basically your keyframe timeline. Now, if you notice, when I move the playhead to the very beginning, the playhead over at the keyframe timeline also moves at the very beginning of it. So this is our starting keyframe. And when I move this to the very end, you'll notice that that also consequentially moves. So that's how you understand your place within the keyframe timeline and your project timeline. So let's make this maybe 60%. And I'm going to move this down to the lower left over here. Let's make it a little bit smaller. There we go. Now, what I want to do, for example, is I just want to move this tractor from left to right. So from zero to around the three second mark. So what I can do now is I can add a keyframe here. And what we can do now is position this to the end. So if we hop back to our previous keyframe, which is our first keyframe, it's going to show us that, oh, it started over here. And if we go to the next keyframe, is going to be going to the left. If we go back to our project here and start from the beginning and press play, you can see now that that tractor is moving from left to right. So let's say I want it to be a bit quicker. What you can do now is advance this a little bit. So I want it to happen at the two second mark. So now when I press play, this tractor is going to move a lot faster from left to right. So let's add another keyframe. Let's add something in the middle. So I'm going to move this to the middle over here and I'm going to add a keyframe and I'm going to move this up to the top. And as you can see, you can see the lines here that are connecting, right? And if I click this to the previous keyframe and press play, it's going to follow that path. Again, similar to what we did before, we can mess around with the timings. So we can make this a little bit longer. And we can have the middle portion going up to the top happen at around the two second mark. It's up to you to play around with the timings. I'm just showing you how you can manipulate the timings. So when you press play, it goes up and then back down. Again, the timeline here is showing you the entirety of your four second, about your four second clip. So we've learned about how to add keyframes. What if you want to delete? Well, that's very simple. Whatever is highlighted in red is the currently selected keyframe. You can navigate through keyframes by selecting each one. You can also navigate by using the buttons down here. So let's say we want to get rid of this middle one. So let's navigate to that. You can select it and you can opt to delete that keyframe. Now it's only going in a straight line from left to right. The next thing that I want to talk about is the keyframe interpolation. So at the moment, this is set to a linear keyframe. So it's pretty much just a very 
linear movement. And let's, for example, just change each of these keyframes into discrete. Now you can change them individually, but in order to show you the differences, I'm going to change all of them into discrete. Now when we press play, notice that nothing happens until we get to the keyframe and then it changes position. Now let's change these keyframes to the third type, which is a smooth keyframe. Now, as you can see, this has more, more of a curvy path. So as it implies, it's more of a smoother movement, going up and then going down. Now let's see what happens when we play around with the keyframe types. So let's change this one to discrete and let's keep this one as smooth and then the last one as smooth. Let's press play. You see nothing happens. It jumps up and then slowly comes back down. Now it's totally up to you to mess around with the keyframe types so that you can get the effect that you want. I'm going to change this back to a smooth effect and note that at the moment we've got the change of position for this image. You can also combine the effects of the keyframe so that you can also achieve whatever else you can change in the effect. So let's demonstrate that. Let's go to the second keyframe over here. Just going to make sure to select it. And let's say in this case, I want to change the rotation. Let's just change this rotation to it going up and then let's see what happens. So we're not only changing its path, we're changing its rotation. So now, as you can see, it looks a little bit better animated. In addition to that, just as an example, we can also change the size. Let's go back to the middle keyframe and maybe we'll mess around with the size and make it a lot bigger. Now you can see the object changes size, gets bigger, and then goes back down. Let's have a look at how we can automatically add some of these keyframes. So let's drag in a new transform effect over here. Everything is set back to the default. Now, what you need to remember is that we need at least two keyframes to activate this. And for the first keyframe, let's just resize this and place it in the lower left hand corner. Let's advance our keyframe over here. And let's say I want to add another one and I want this one to be in the top left position. Now, when I advance this, I can now move this keyframe and it will automatically generate a new one and I can move it to wherever I want it to be. Then let me advance this a little bit further. And then when I move this image now, see that it automatically generates a new keyframe and then I'll move it a little bit more. And then if we go back to the first keyframe, we have now traced our steps. So now that we've understood the basic concepts of keyframing, let's look at this with another example. Now, this is just a very simple video of this lady that's walking. Now, what I want to do is I want to add some sort of a cinematic reveal effect. This video has no sound, so we've got an empty audio container over here. I'm just going to select it, right click, ungroup clips, and then remove the empty audio container just so that it's nice and clean when we do this demonstration. Let's go to effects and let us search for crop. So we've got this effect over here, crop scale and tilt. Let's drag this in. And when I click it, we've got the parameters of what we want to crop over here. And you can see that similar keyframeable timeline over here. Let's start with our first keyframe. What I want to do is I want to crop the top. I'm going to put a 200 units over here. I believe it's 200 pixels. And I'm also going to crop the bottom by 200. So now that's cropped. When we press play, nothing happens. The whole thing is cropped. But I want to reveal the background somewhere at this point. So now what I can do is I can add a keyframe here. And at that point, when we go back to the beginning, the crop is at 200 and we go to this point if we want everything to already be revealed, we want the crop to go down to zero. So let's have a look at what this looks like. We'll skip to the first keyframe, press play, and you can see the crop slowly gets removed. That's it for today. I hope you learned something in this tutorial. You can check out my channel for more tutorials on Caden Live. 
and I hope to see you guys next time. Bye-bye.